John 14, 1 to 3. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Good evening and welcome to Signs of the Times Crusade. Are we happy to be here this evening? I am very happy to be here. That's lovely. God has been extremely good to us throughout the first week of this crusade, and we are also expecting the same outpouring of blessings this week. At this school of study, we learn, we understand, and we put to practice what we hear night after night. The I hope everybody has been doing the same. Yes, yes, we have. The big question for tonight is, from here to where? Let us be open and reciprocate to this message. Be blessed. I invite us to stand for prayer. Oh, Father and our God, we are truly thankful for your presence with us here tonight as we continue to listen to the signs of the times crusade in preparation for your second coming. We are thankful for our many friends and loved ones who are with us tonight. And we pray that the Holy Spirit will open their hearts and their understanding. So at the end of tonight's sitting, we all will make intelligent decisions for Christ. We ask that you bless the evangelist with an anointing tonight. Give him clarity, give him wisdom and understanding. Bless us all that are present here tonight, we pray. Keep the crusade team safe and sound. Those that are on their way, bring them, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. Good night, everyone. Is everybody good this night? Wow, just, sh just wave your hand. Let's see how good you are. Then, right, that tells us that you are wonderful and just waiting to start our singing while you will join with us. And we do hope you had a wonderful night, wonderful last night, and I hope today you had a beautiful day and God will continue to bless you as you. Our first song is 180, 185. Jesus is all the world to me. After two, one, two. Jesus is all the world to me. My life, my joy, my all. He is my strength. Makes me glad. 
There's no other name like Jesus. Stays the dearest name we know. Tis the angel's joy in heaven. Tis the Christian's joy below. Sweet name, sweet name. Praise the 
church. Good night, church. Kylie again with tonight's health nugget. And tonight we will be speaking about what? What do you think we'll be speaking about tonight? Somebody got it right. We will be speaking about the importance of rest. Now, how many of us here enjoy resting? And you know, when you work hard, the Bible says that when you sleep, your, sweet, your sleep shall be what? Sweet. Because when you work hard, you want to rest. Now, you know, usual rundown, where we see Proverbs 26 and verse 2 says, The curse causeless shall not come. Ministry of Healing, page 234 says, Disease never comes without a cause. And our usual definition of disease, disease is an effort of nature to free the system from conditions that result from a violation of the laws of health. Some may ask, what are the laws of health? Pure air, sunlight, abstemiousness, rest, exercise, proper diet, the use of water, trust in divine power. These are the two remedies, and this is taken from Ministry of Healing, page 127. It says, there is a daily choice that we have to make. The invitation comes daily. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you what? Rest. So we can only find rest in who? In Jesus. It says here, those who make great exertions to accomplish so much work in a given time and continue to labor when their judgment tells them they should rest are never gainers. They are living on borrowed capital. They are expending the vital force which they will need at a future time, and when the energy that they have so recklessly used is demanded, they fail for the want of it. You know, sometimes you're killing yourself to work, and you recognize the work kill you, right? Mm? Isn't that so? And he says they never gain, and sometimes people working, working, working to fill up their pocket, to fill up the bank account. And then when you fill the coffers, the doctor empty it right back out. Isn't that so, Brother Williams? So he says here, I've been shown that those who do this often lose much more than they gain. Their energies are exhausted. They labor on nervous excitement. You know, some people can only work once they're excited. Some people, they need coffee. Some people, they need chocolate. They need certain things to boost them. They go and buy boom and all of these, you know, energy drinks because they can't function because their body needs what? Rest. And it says here, they may not realize any injury, immediate injury, but they are surely 
undermining their constitution. Physical effects of the, from the lack of proper rest is it lowers your immune system. It, there is a lack of concentration, a quick temper, impatience, impaired cognitive performance, and this is very important for those who are students, and fatigue. Shift workers should note that melatonin is a hormone that is released between when? 10 and 12 when the body's at rest. So we should strive by the grace of God to get to bed by what time? So that means even though we grown up and we move out of our parents' house, we still have a bedtime because God wants us to have health. Now he says melatonin is the body's natural antioxidant and tumor suppressant. So sometimes people may have cancer, they may have other tumor, other diseases. And because of the lack of rest, the cancer or whatever they're struggling with, it goes crazy. You know why? Because the body does not have any time to repair itself. You know, when you use a computer, the computer sometimes would flash on the screen and say, what? Take a break, right? And then the computer would turn off the fan, and that what that mean is resting. If machines that man make not to rest, why doesn't man not to rest? It says, studies in Denmark and the U.S. show us that for females, its lack increases breast cancer by 50 to 55 percent. That's crazy. And colon cancer by 45 to 50 percent. And for men, prostate cancer by 45 to 50 and colon by 45 to 50. So a lack of rest can increase your risk of getting cancer. It says sunlight helps reset the body's biorhythm. And I remember when we talk about sunlight, you see when the cock fall ball the first in the morning, but when night come, what you do? It go in too. But we play the opposite and we up on our phones and you up and you watching Netflix and you watching all kind of things when our body's made for rest. And if you recognize those who are a little old like Brother Ratwit, we know when we didn't have TV, people were much more healthy. <laughs> He's laughing. It says, when sunlight goes through the iris, the, to the pineal gland, it helps to reset the body's biological clock. So people who are having issues with sleep, they need to get exposure to what? Sunlight. It says, hormones, body rhythm, and patterns are then balanced and set in place. Okay, let me move past this. Oh, one quick thing. If one eats after 6.30, the production of melatonin is stopped in the gut. So this is encouraging us to try not to eat too late. When you eat late, sometimes you can actually stop biological functions that would help you. It says, in the evening, melatonin is high and serotonin is low. The body reduces and it begins to tone down when it is dark and sleep sets in. But for sleep to set in, the place has to be what? Right, brother, brought to it, the place has to be dark. So that's why we encourage us, when you go to bed, you turn off your phone, you turn off your tablet, and you put them down. Bed is for sleep, not for tablet. If you're reading the Bible, even I encourage you to like me, put a chair in your room, and you can sit there, and you can read it, because you'll be more focused than when you're lying down. Okay, it says, avoid TV and computer. Turn off for one hour before bedtime, and the bright lights from the TV and computer stimulates the brain. So... I will end here for tonight with our health nugget, and I pray that all of us will take heed to these simple things because they're simple and they're available to every one of us. Could God make sure that health care is in the reach of all. Isn't that so? So may God continue to bless us, and as we continue in tonight's service, I pray that we remember when we go home to rest. Amen. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Praise the name of the Lord. Trust that you had a good day today. You know, God is good to all of us, and we can testify of God's grace, his goodness, his love, his kindness, his patience, his compassion, his healing virtues. Will somebody say amen? Amen. It's my duty tonight to greet us and to welcome us once again into the house of the Lord where we can sit once again as one man's children 
at the feet of Jesus as he speaks to us his marvelous, wonderful words of life. Will somebody say amen? All right, if you're just coming for the first time, is there anybody tonight coming for the first time? Anybody for the first time? Nobody for the first time. All right, just want to encourage us to remind our friends as we visit with them, just give them a gentle reminder. Let them know the best place to be is over here at Bible Speaks at the Signs of the Times Gospel Seminar. Amen? As usual, we want to talk, thank our um, hosts, Sister Alia Weeks, and we also want to thank our choristers and our musicians, our tech team, our ushers, our secretaries, our prayer team. We just want to thank you so much. We want to ask, sometimes we miss out our bus drivers. We want to thank them as well because they're playing a wonderful part. And if you're visiting with us tonight, we just want you to raise your hands if you're visiting. Amen, 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 amen. We want to thank you so much for coming tonight. We know that there is a blessing in store for you, uh, Mrs. Jean. And we're delightful to have you and to have your grandchildren with us tonight as we sit in the presence of God. Are there any other visiting friends tonight? Just want to acknowledge you. Just raise your hands wherever you are. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Is that Sister Frances in the back with a hat? All right. We're happy to have you as well. And look like your, grand, your granddaughter there. Thank God that he brought you here tonight. Bless the name of the Lord. Sister Trudy. Boy, she has a smile from here to here. Amen. <laughs> Bless the Lord. I think you are the happiest person in the world today. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord for what he has begun in your life. I know um, brother me thinks he's the happiest person as well. <laughs> Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. What a man, Christ Jesus, who can turn our situations around, who can, can give us joy uh, amidst the storms, amidst life trials, amidst our difficulties, amidst the enemy's annoyance and his harassment. God still is making a way out that we can have the peace of Christ in our hearts. And we just want to thank the Lord for um, giving us, all of us here, that opportunity to come to know him, who to know his life eternal. But Sister Trudy and Brother Mead, we had the light head. Heaven rejoices, the Bible says, over one sinner that repented. Sabbath we had four. So it's big celebration in heaven. Amen? Bless the name of the Lord. Well, this Sabbath, others are requesting baptism. So we're having another big baptism this Sabbath. Somebody say amen. 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 We're having a big, 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 big baptism. I'm not even going to hint any names in Jesus' name. Sister Jane, again, we're delighted to have you here with us. We know that your husband wanted to be here, but he promises that he's going to come out and, um, tomorrow. We look forward for the Lord bringing him here tomorrow where we can continue to learn in the school of Christ. Amen? All right, we want to go um, right ahead into our memory text. Anybody can remember the first memory text? John 3, 17 says what? For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be what? Save. Praise the name of the Lord. All right, John 17, verse 3. And this is life eternal, that they may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. What about 40? Isaiah 14, verse 8. The grass does what? Wither it, and the flowers fade it, but the what? The word of God shall stand forever. We're still in Isaiah, the gospel prophet, Isaiah 41 and verse 10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not, be dismayed, for what? I am God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Sabbath morning, we gave you a very easy one. 
All the children need to know this. John 3.16. I'm not even going to start the video. John 3.16. What a promise. God gave the best gift of heaven unto us. And God is not going to take him back. Amen? Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Sunday night, we look at 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 and 16. Anybody remember that? Anybody remember that? 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 and 16. Love not the world. Neither the things of the world. For if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the, the pride of life is not of the Father, but of the what? Of the world. Tonight is a, not an easy one. And it's taken from Luke chapter 19, verse 10. The Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was what? Lost. And that is who? This planet. Amen? We were alienated from the Israel of God. We were alienated from God's creatures. In other words, we were quarantined because of sin. But Jesus, the great physician, came to fix that issue, that problem. All right? So um, tonight we are moving on. Yesterday... We looked at the greatest show on earth. Tonight, we're looking from here to where. It's a big question. The Bible is going to answer that question for us tonight. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, we have announced that we are, um, when we bring our visiting friends, we should register them. Because at the end of this campaign, the person who brings the most visitors, we have a lovely gift for you. All right? And that's not all. The visitor that bring the most visitors, we have a gift for you as well. But when you come, make sure you stop at the secretary's desk and you register, register um, your visitors. Amen? God bless you as we wait on the Lord until I come again. Warmest good night greetings to one and all. The psalmist David declares, The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof, and they and the world and all that dwell within it. So we count it a great privilege to be able to give back what God has given to us. Tonight we ask that the ushers will please take their places. Let us pray. Divine God and Heavenly Father, as we come tonight, O oh God, we ask that whatever offering we have to bring, dear Father, that we will put those into the offering buckets. But tonight, O oh God, we bring of ourselves, and we pray, dear God, that as we give ourselves to you, that you will transform us in you, O oh God, Continue to use tonight's offering to your name's honor and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 When the praises go up and the blessings come down, when the praises go up.
ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, if you are able to stand, we invite you to stand with us as we praise sing. Him. Praise Him. Art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done here on earth in our hearts as it is in heaven. Tonight, dear God, we have come by here to worship. We have come by here, Lord, to sing the songs of Zion. We have come by here to praise you from whom all blessings flow. And we have come by here, dear God, to be refreshed. We ask tonight that you remove those hindrances to our Christian success from us. Cleanse us from sin's guilt, its holy power, and its delusion. And fill us with your love. Fill us with your peace. Fill us with your strength. Fill us with your goodness, dear God. And we pray, Father, tonight that as we learn of thee in the school of Christ, that our souls will be well watered, that we will be well fed by the bread of life. So bless us as we Wait upon thee is our prayer with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Well, I just want to welcome Elder Tong. She so just walked in a few minutes ago. As usual, we are delighted to have you here with us. As we sit together, as we sit in the presence of God. Brother Martin, we are happy to have you as well. And we pray that as we go forward, that we will go forward in the strength and power of Christ. The big subject tonight, from here to where, that's the big question as well. Out here we believe that the Bible and the Bible alone has the answers for all our questions, the solution for all our problems, the remedy for our dilemma called sin. My beloved friends, that remedy is invested in one man, and his name is Jesus. Will somebody say amen? The book of Job, as we open the B-I-B-L-E, Job chapter 14 and verse 10, the question is asked, but man dieth and wasteth away. Yea, man giveth up the ghost, and where is he? That's a good question, then, beloved. Is that a good question? It's a free question. What happened to a man, a man when he died? Question again, and you get what were we looking at tonight? Is does man, when he die, goes to hell? Some says he goes to hell. Others says he goes to heaven. 
Some people say that he goes to a place called purgatory. Or, question, does man come back as something else? These are all philosophies of man. But beloved friends, we want to hear, as we get into the subject tonight, some testimonies by holy men as they left their record for admonition and for guidance and for our wisdom. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 17 and 19, the Bible says, By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And he that had received the promise offered up his only begotten son. Verse 18, of whom it was said, that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. 19, accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, we, understory, we understand the story of Abraham called by God out of Ur of the child years. And God showed Abraham that he was going to lead him to the desert. And Abraham believed God that God was going to make him a father of the nations. And out of his loins shall come kings. And the Bible says that Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for what? Righteousness. We have been learning, beloved friends, that righteousness is right doing. Amen? So when we believe what God has promised, we have God's or Christ's righteousness imputed unto us. That means God gave us credit for Christ's right doing. All right? God gave us credit for Christ's right doing. But you know the story of Isaac, of Abraham. God told him he was going to have a son. But years has passed. And Abraham is getting old. And Abraham don't see no way possible how this is going to happen. He has passed years. His wife is stricken in years. And so Abraham decided he was going to help God. And so his wife sent him the maid. And she went and they did their stuff. And a little boy came out by the name of Ishmael. But you know, when you have two women in the house, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? <laughs> Elder Tug. <laughs> Trouble, right? Trouble. God permitted it, but you, you just say the scriptures. God ideal is one woman, one man. God allowed them in their ignorance to make that happen. But we see that um, is, the maid begin to talk, Sarah, you have the ring, but I have the what? No, who said that? You almost stop it, man. Get over that. <laughs> it's just like that today, you know? You have the ring, but I have the man. And Sarah was grieved. And he asked her husband to put her away. All right? Because Ishmael was not the son of promise. So God came to for, for eventually for um, Abraham. And God asked Abraham, to deliver back up his son unto him. Now, most of us would have said, no, 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 no. That's devilish. Most of us would have believed that that is a false voice because God says, right, in a wonder commandment, said that we should not what? We should not kill. But Abraham knew the voice of God. And Hebrews says that Abraham believed in the resurrection because he believed if he offered back his son to God, God is able to raise him up in the resurrection. Will somebody say amen? amen. All right, we're going to look at another testimony. John 11, verse 22, 24. Jesus said unto her, that's Martha, thy brother shall rise again. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the where? In the resurrection of the last days. Amen? So these are testimonies that people be, believe that when a man dies, as long as he dies in Christ, there is a resurrection coming for that person dying in Christ. And we're going to learn a lot more. All right? In Matthew chapter 22 and verse 23, the Bible says, The same day came the Sadducees, which say that there is no resurrection and axiom. All right? 
The Sadducees was a sect of hierarchy in Israel, uh, um, in Israelite religion. But they didn't believe in the resurrection. You'll have a lot of people today that don't believe in the resurrection, you know. They don't believe in the resurrection, all right? All right? The big question tonight, how did God create man in the beginning as we study the subject of the state of the dead? My beloved friends, it is a subject or a doctrine which we must have clear perception of, all right? Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7 says what? And the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And what happened? And man became a living soul. Notice, beloved friends, that God formed man from where? The dust of the ground. Was man alive, yes or no? No. And God did something else. What did he do? He breathed into nostrils of man, and man became a living soul. In other words, man become a life. All right? That's where life began for man here upon planet Earth. Question. What happens at death according to the scriptures? Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 7 says, Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. Now do we understand that? At death, the reverse happened. God made man out of the dust, breathed into his nostrils. At death, the body goes back to the dust, and the breath goes back to God that gave it. Um, life in the first place. Amen? Now the big question as well is, who is the father of lies? John 8, 44, we are instructed, he are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of lies, all right? Sin originated with Satan. So he's always opposing God. If God says life, what does Satan say? He says death. When Christ says light, he says darkness. When God says truth, he says error. When God says that you're going to die, Satan says, no, you're not going to die. Amen? And we're going to see that tonight. And Jesus called him the father of lies. And those who follow his path, are his children. But I thank God tonight that Jesus came to this earth, to the sin cursed earth, in a hopeless world to save sinners from our sins. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 4. We know the story. It says, And the serpent said unto the woman, He shall not surely die. We know the story, we read it a few nights ago. We read it throughout our Christian history. That the devil went to Eve, who was alone, away from her husband's side, and he came as a friend. And he said unto her, Yea, had God said that you should not eat of the tree of, the, of, life, of good and evil? And the woman was quick. She says, God did not say that. God said we should not eat of it, nor touch it, lest we die. And the devil said what? Ye shall not surely die. When God said you're going to die, you're going to die. Don't let nobody change that. Amen? Don't let nobody change that. Romans chapter 6 and verse 23, what does that say? For the wages of sin is what? But the gift of God is eternal life, not through any preacher, not through any boss, not through any intellectual, but to whom? Jesus Christ, our Lord. But the wages of sin is death. That's what Satan brings. That's what disobedience brings. That's what fear and doubt brings. That's what Satan brings. But Christ came that we might have life and have it what? Jesus says, the thief cometh not, but to kill, to steal, and destroy. But I am I, 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 come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Ladies and gentlemen, in Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6, the Bible declares, For unto us a son is born, and unto us a child is given. Amen? And the government shall be upon his shoulder, 
And his name shall be called what? Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Isaiah was known as the Gospel Prophet. But Isaiah, through the presence and power and influence of the Holy Spirit, has brought hope to every sinner. The Bible says that the whole government of heaven, the government of glory, was represented unto us, was revealed unto us through the life and death and burial and resurrection of Jesus. Christ came to this earth to save sinners. Christ came to this earth to reveal the Father's character of love, of care, of goodness, of loving kindness, of truth, of power. Christ came to this earth to represent the character of Christ. The character, sorry, of God. The character of God was on the line. There was doubt in the minds of the unfallen world as to the character of Satan. Christ could have killed Satan the minute that he sinned. But the angels will serve God out of fear. So God allow him to live. So he can demonstrate his sophistries, his lies, his maliciousness, his cruelty, his rebellion, his hatred for God and for Jesus and for the truth and for the law of God. God allow him. God sent forth his son, my beloved friends, in this cruel world, this wicked world, this world, my beloved friends, filled with sinners. God sent forth his son that men might be reconciled, that our minds might be healed. And that the truth of God can be our shield and our buckler. So Christ came. And his, will, his job was weighty. His job was heavy. His job was to reveal the character of God, the Father, and the blessedness of his will, and of his truth, and of his power, and of his goodness for the sinner. My beloved friends, we are all helpless without Jesus. Do you know that? All of us are helpless. We are unable to recover ourselves from sin. Night after night, we are saying that. Night after night, we are going over by that. If we could have healed and helped and recover ourselves from sin's guilt and his stain, Christ would not come down here to this earth to suffer this cruel humiliation. Christ understood that we needed help. The Bible called it grace. God's unmerited favor. In Romans chapter 5 and verse 10, the Bible says, When we were yet enemies to Christ, Christ came and died for us. He didn't wait until we start to love him because we can't do it without him coming to us. Can't do it. Can't do it. Job 14 and verse says, who, Job 14 and verse 4, the Bible says, who can bring a clean thing out of unclean thing? Romans 3 and verse 10 and 11, the Bible says, there is none that doeth good, none that seeketh after righteousness. Tonight we gave you a text in Luke chapter 19 and verse 10. The Bible says, the Son of Man cometh not now, the Son of Man came to what? Seek and to save that which was lost. Lost in our sin. We don't even want Jesus. Do you know that? Uh-uh. We can't come to Jesus unless Jesus come to us. That's how hopeless we are. Brother, Brother Chong, that's not true. That's how hopeless we are. None, the Bible says, that seek it after God. Do you have a desire to come here tonight, Sister Jean? God seeking you. The Bible describes Jesus as the good shepherd. Amen? God is seeking after lost men. Amen. Romans 3, 23. The Bible says, for all. How many? All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Question, what appointment must man keep? The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 27, As is, is appointed unto men 
wants to die, but after this, you know when you go to funeral, you hear this quote a lot, but a lot of people I perceive don't understand what that is saying. All of us has two appointments, you know right? Am I speaking something strange? The, the, the scripture said, it is appointed unto man once to die, but after that the what? The judgment. Now, maybe the last Sabbath, we'll preach the millennium. As God's people, the Bible says the meek shall inherit the what? But according to Revelation 20, how long are we going to be in heaven for? But we're coming back down here. Down here is where we're going to come back, all right? Um, Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 6, verse 2 and 3 says we're going to judge the world. The saints are going to judge angels. Not the good angels, but the bad angels. And God not going to finally destroy the wicked until we can see the records. The records why God can't allow certain people to come to heaven. They turn their back upon the truth. They despise the one that brings truth. My Lord. My Lord. And God is going to show us the record. He's going to show us the record. Amen? He's going to show us the record. So man has an appointment to die. Some of us are going to be alive now when Christ comes. But once your time is up, you're going to die. It's an appointment that you can't put off. You can't say, Lord, have mercy upon me when the, when the, the death calls hand come for you. I mean, the king Hezekiah, he was going to die. And he prayed to God and God gave him how many more years? How many more years? Fifteen more years. God gave him 15 more years. Beloved friends, we are living in a time when I believe the Lord shall come very shortly. God is making up his number. And that's why we are here tonight. We are here tonight to hear the word of God and to learn his, the school of Christ. What the Lord has prepared for us in the end of the world that we might not be deceived. All right? So after death is the judgment. All right? Okay. What is man's concern about that? Job 14, 14 says, If a man die, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change come. That's a great question. If I die, yeah, is that the end? And Job gave the answer. He wrote the answer. He says there, All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change come. I said Job wrote it. But did you know who wrote the book of Job? Somebody has to know. Pastor Hashem out. Who wrote the book of Job? It was Moses. Moses wrote the five books of the Bible called the law, or the Pentateuch, or the Torah. But he also wrote the book of Job, all right? Job 16.22. The big question is, where is the dead at this time? A few years are come, then I shall go to the way whence I shall not return. All right? So God, beloved friends, when men came fresh from the hand of God, in spite of their sin, men used to live hundreds of years. Do you know that? Methuselah lived 969 years. Noah lived 950 years. Adam lived 930 years. Men lived 800, 700 years. Amen? But God saw that the hearts of men was only evil continually. God cleansed this earth of sin with the waters, and we call it a flood of Noah. All right? But after that, men begin to deteriorate in quick succession. All right? They begin to live less and less and less. Abraham lived, I think it's 137 years. Moses, 120 something. And God says three score and ten. And Sister Williams and Brother Williams. Amen? And Sister Jean, he said, if you take care of your body, you can live past that. Not true, Brother Walter? Yeah? Not true? 70 years, Brother Williams, he gave us. But if you rejoice in the Lord, if you manage your stress, if you don't keep roaring in my beloved friends, you can live much longer. And I want to tell you this. Uh, there is a survey done by National, National Geographic and CNN and ABC, and they went around the world to find out who has the most centurions. There were some people in Japan, some people in Italy, but the most they found 
was some Seventh-day Adventists that practiced the laws of health in Loma Linda, Loma Linda, California. They have the most centurions. And this study revealed that the Seventh-day Adventists live an, a, an average of 10 to 14 years longer than everybody else in the world. But these are they that practice the laws of health. Amen? So there are certain food that God has permitted us to eat, but God wants us to step fast and to step by step go back to his original plan, which is fruit, grains, nuts, and he added vegetables. I just want to put that in, beloved friends, all right? So we see here that the Seventh-day Adventists that practice the laws of health, they live an average of 10 to 14 years longer than other souls, all right? Just wanted to just plug that in there. Job chapter 7, 8, 9, and 10, can the dead return to his house? The eye of him that had seen me shall see me no more. Thine eyes are upon me, and I am not. As the cloud is consumed and vanish away, so he that goeth down to the grave shall come up no more. I want you to take notice. Verse 10, he shall return no more to his house, neither shall his place know him anymore. So what about Jumbies and ghosts? Alexander, what about Sokana and Jabalas and Jackalang Chang? Pastor, you don't know those words. You're too young to know that. <laughs> I see Brother Williams and Sister Williams over here killing themselves with laugh. You don't know that, Sister, Sister Katie, granddaughter. You can't know that. We used to have stories of of man disappearing and reappearing and great balls of fire and pumpkin this and man turning to dog and all kind of stuff. Fred, like what? Amen? Some folks don't even walk close to, to the burying ground. Fred. Amen? <laughs> We're going to find out something here today. I told you before, when my dad died, I went up into his room, I was cooling out, and two persons came to him. It was a Sunday evening. And the third time I woke, they woke me up because I was sleeping early. The third time I woke, I see somebody standing up by, or claim I see somebody standing up down by the bed, the feet, the foot of the bed. And like he had a lamp in his hand, he looked like daddy. So I began to twiggle my finger, <laughs> make sure I'm not sleeping, I'm not dreaming. Amen? And you know, my father had a friend, and she sent me to Lachiquita, Brother Dick. <laughs> you buy something called Indian head. It's prayed to keep out Jumbi. <laughs> what the fuck is this? <laughs> Boy, this is a word. What a thing for the dog. Amen. But thank God for the, for the knowledge of the truth. When I came to this church, the word of God says that they don't know anything. He can't come back to his house. Amen. Can't come back to his house. The devil was playing tricks on me. And you've played tricks on countless millions, billions. We're standing on the word of God. We're not standing on anybody's experience. The word of God. All right? We're standing on the word of God. All right? Job 14 verse 21. The big question, do the dead know anything? The Bible says here, his sons come to honor and know it, it not. And they are brought low and he perceive it not. You know, when your parents are alive, it's the best time to visit them. Cook some lunch. Talk with them. Hug them up. Do something nice for them, my beloved friends. Love your parents. You know, I teach my children all the time, the fifth commandment is the only commandment is a promise. Do you know that? What does it say? Honor your father and your mother that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth you. Are you children talking bad words as we call it? Indecent language to their parents. Have mercy, Lord. And we are told that it means that we are to honor gray here. Amen? And honor those who are in charge of you. Sometimes, you know, parents can be a little ticklish sometimes. We can be a little rough sometimes. But this is no time to dishonor your parents. Amen? That's the only promise in the Ten Commandments that Paul says the only commandment with a promise. Okay? And so I'm saying here that at death, children are there and they're crying, but all their life, mommy's sick, but they won't visit. They won't give a, a call. 
They're dependent on little sister or big brother or some other person to go and visit. And they would not visit their parents. And we got to be careful. But at, at the funeral, nobody in the world can cry more than them. Balling and some of them hold their stomach. And if they could jump down in the grave, they will do that. But poor granny down there, she don't know a single thing what's happening. If you come, she don't know. If you don't come, she don't know. If you speak well, she don't know. She can't hear. If you brought flowers, and she could have spoken. She could have said, you could have given them a few weeks ago. Now is the time to take care of your parents, your grandparents, to visit with them, to comfort them, to do whatever you can do to make their mature life comfortable. I thank God for parents. Amen. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 5. The Bible says what? For the living know that they shall die, but the what? Dead know not anything, neither have they any more a reward. For the memory of them is forgotten. There are folks today, before they open up their business, they consult evil spirits. My Bible tells me that the dead do not know anything. So how can the dead inform me? The dead knows not anything. Amen. Verse number 6 says, Also their love and their hatred and their envy is now perished. Neither have they, they any more a portion forever in anything that is done under the sun. They don't have no life. They can't hate you. They can't envy you. They can't love you. They can't do a single thing for them because their body is gone back to the earth and the breath is gone back to whom? God. Praise the name of the Lord. And beloved friends, is a reason why we're studying this tonight, you know. It's a reason. We ought to know the state of the dead. Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 19 and 20 says what? And when they shall say unto you, seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and unto wizards that peep, and that mutter, shall not a people seek unto their God for the living to the dead? Beloved friends, when you go into your challenges, see God. You're going through some rough times. Seek God. Amen? When things are happening to you, don't put on no guard ring. Don't put on any guard ring. You're having demonic powers. The devil can harm you. All right? Can't harm you when your life is in Christ. We learned that before. Amen? He cannot harm you. Matter of fact, we are told by the gospel prophet, Isaiah 54 verse 17, what he says what? No weapons that is formed against you shall do what? Prosper. For in the judgment, every tongue that rises up against you, thou shalt condemn. And this is the heritage of the servants of God. And their righteousness is of me, says the who? Of the Lord. Amen. Christ is our righteousness. Only what Christ has done has satisfied the claims of the law. We say it over and over and over and over and over again. Only Christ met the law's demands. The law says, if you sin, you're going to die. That must be fulfilled. That is the justice that comes from the law. But the law says, there is hope in Jesus. Amen. Amen. The Bible says that the blood of Jesus cleanses us from how many sin? All sin. We deserve to die. But Jesus paid it all. Praise the name of the Lord. So don't go to no obia man. If you're having any family problems, don't go to no obia man. If you're having any financial difficulties, don't seek the obia man. Amen? If you're looking for a husband or a wife, don't go looking to no obia man. If you're having problems on your jobs and you want promotion, don't go to any other man. You're just seeking the devil and you're seeking darkness and you're bringing a curse upon yourself and your families. And if you're doing it right now, by the grace of God, God has the power, Sister Katie, to forgive you and to give you power over these demonic activities. Will somebody say amen? Praise the name of the Lord. 
The Bible says to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light on them. The old man don't want to hear the law. And they hate all the testimonies of the law. And the Bible says, don't go to them because there are no light in them. All right? They might have some sweet, enticing words. You understand? What a lovely lady like you. Doing with such a cruel man. I'm going to give you a ring to keep your husband. Uh, Brother Simon. <laughs> well, God is good. Amen. Some of you look very serious, don't you? But this is real stuff. <laughs> this is truly, this is real stuff, you know? And God is a real God. And he wants to give us hope. And he wants to give us peace. And he wants to give us victory. Amen? Bless the name of the Lord. Psalms 115, verse 17. The Bible says, The dead praise not the Lord, neither any that goes down into silence. If you want to praise God, from whom all blessings flow, you have an opportunity now. Nobody can stop you. But when you're going to the grave, no matter how much saint you are, you can give God praise. Amen? Psalm 6 and verse 5. For in that there is no remembrance of thee for the grave. For in the grave, who shall give thee thanks? If you want to express your gratitude to God for sending us Jesus, give him thanks now. Get up early in the morning, have that spirit of gratitude that God has put you to sleep and God has watched over you. God has protected you. God has woke you up again. God is still with you. And God has promised in you. And God is still working on you. And God wants to use you. And God has a purpose for you. Amen? God has a purpose for every single soul upon planet earth. Whether we will realize and accept that purpose is our choice. But God, the Bible says, is not willing that any should perish. But how much? All beloved should come to repentance. God has a purpose for every single soul. Young man, God has a purpose for you. My little friend, today, God has a purpose for you. Not our children, not our friends, not our brethren. God has a purpose for you. Went by my little friend today, and she was stricken. Could even walk. She fell on the ground. And the Lord has shown me what happened. She was crossing her foot. And her grandfather says that it always happened to her. You understand? So I raise her up. I lift her up again. I lift her up. And I tell the grandmother, no children, that we should not let her cross her legs. I learned that from, I believe it's from another um, health professional. This man was on a plane, and they couldn't find out why he wasn't moving. But his leg was crossed, and what he did, he closed off the circulation of blood. I think this is what happened to our young friend today. I went for my little oil and anointed her, anointed the whole family. I prayed with them. Look at her tonight. This morning she's going to walk. Praise God. Praise God. God is real, beloved friends. God is real. God is real. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Okay, we're moving on. Revelation 16 and verse 13 tells us who are doing these miracles. The Bible says, I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. Ladies and gentlemen, when you see folks come looking like your granddaddy and your grandmammy, and when you are tempted to go to the Obi man, they can't help you. The devil is going to do some foolishness in the end of the world, and many of us are going to be challenged. You might have a situation in your life, and you're praying. I, I, I just want to drop this in. There's a book called Sundays coming, written by um, Edward Reed, who was our general conference um, stewardship leader at one time. And he gave a story of one of our Assembly Adventist pastors. 
And they had a little seminar to go to. And he was praying for his daughter for a long time. Nothing seemed to be happening. And he used this moment, rather than going to the seminar, he went to some spiritualist. Never came back to the church. Wait on God, beloved friends. There might be something in your life. You're praying about it. Keep praying. Examine your life, first of all, to see if there's any hindrance, why your prayers are not being answered the way you want it to answer. But keep praying. Keep praying, beloved friends. Ask God if there are any hindrances to your prayers not being answered. And if God reveal it to you, beloved friends, confess it to God. Confession is not informing God. Confession is telling God, I need you. I can't help myself. God knows who is going to get baptized in this crusade. He knows before you're even born who are going to accept him and who is going to reject him. But he has given us the power of choice. He's allowing us to live out our lives and to make our choices. But God knows every single thing. Paul the Bible says, Paul prayed to God three times. And the three times, God said, no. Paul was a godly man. And all Jesus said to him, my grace is sufficient for you. Something you're going to go in a little challenge, and that's all you're going to hear from God. He's not going to move the challenge from you. Because the same challenge that you're going through, it becomes a ministry. And Paul acknowledged that. He understood that. He says, lest I become exalted above measure, I'd rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Some of us are too proud and too boasting. And if God give us certain gifts, we will look down upon others and scorn them. All of us went to school. How come you don't have any money? How come you don't have this? And how come you don't have that? So God gives special gifts to some person because he knows they are going to be good stewards. You all didn't hear that? Yeah. Oh, let, me, let me divert from that. Let me digress. Let me digress, beloved friends. Sometimes you'll be in your crucibles and God knows that's the only way you're going to keep your focus and humble. That's what he does. That's what he does. Praise the Lord. God is good, my beloved friends. Shall mortal man be more just than God? Shall a man be more pure than his maker? Man is mortal, subject to death, my beloved friends. In 1 Timothy 6.16, who only had immortality, dwelling in lies. Come, Sister Katie. Dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, whom no man had seen, nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting Amen. God alone has immortality. But God has promised us, my beloved friends, if we hold on, God has promised us, God has promised us, behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. This sleep means that you're sleeping in Christ. And the saints who die in Christ, to him and to God is just like a sleep. Or we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. My beloved friend, St. Paul says, I believe it's 1 Corinthians 15, 31, that the last enemy that is going to be buried is what? Death. Death is an enemy. God didn't create us to die. Didn't create us to die. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. That means we die because we sin, and sin is the transgression of the law. First John 3, 4 says, Whosoever committed sin transgressed also the law, for sin 
is the transgression of the law. Verse 57. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Beloved friends, God don't only want to pardon us. He wants to give us victory over every defect, every defilement, every earthliness, every sin, and the weight which so easily besets us. But it's a journey, and it takes time. But in the end of the world, we have to be pleading with God. In the end of the world, we need to stay the step for us. But Jesus is coming soon, but God promised us the what? The victory to whom? To Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. Y'all are beginning to sleep. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4, For whatsoever is born of God, overcome it the what? The world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, shall, shall, shall be what? And this is the victory that overcometh the world. In other words, God has promised us not just pardon for sin, but victory over sin. And for that, we must plead day and night. As God revealed to us our defects, he wants to give us the power over every weight and every big be, 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 Get in sins. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. When you're working for Jesus, beloved friends, your labor is not in vain. Amen? When you're working for Jesus, your labor is not in vain. Some of you might just be planting the seeds. Inviting your friends. You visited with them. You live in a prayer. Amen? With them. Encouraging them to serve the Lord. You're opening up the scriptures. You're pointing out the man Jesus. The Lamb of God that taken away the sins of the world. And they are contemplating that. Jesus says, some sow. And others reap. But the Spirit of God gives the what? Increase. We are to be co-laborers with God. And Jesus said... To the prophet Jeremiah, my word shall not return unto me a void. My last testimony, for I know that my Redeemer liveth. This is Job. And that he shall stand on the latter day upon the earth. Though after my skin, worm, destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold and not another, though my reins be consumed with me. Sing, sister. Tonight, beloved friends. I hear thy welcome voice. Wanted to take that call. A look me, Lord, to thee. of the great sacrifice for the sins oh, of the whole world. Cleansing in thy precious blood. Jesus. That Our beloved brother, from Calvary. Praise God. Hallelujah. I Praise God. I am coming, Lord. Jesus. Coming now to thee. It's not only our sacrifice. Wash me, cleanse me. But he's our surety. That he's the friend of sinners. From Calvary. Though Tonight, my beloved friends, John had said, Behold what manner of love my the Father has, has bestowed upon us, that, that we should be called the sons of God. Yet not appear what we shall be, but we know when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. And everyone that had this hope in him, purify himself even as he is pure. Jesus is coming. He's coming for a prepared people. And tonight, John says, Behold the Lamb of God, that's John the Baptist, that taketh away the sin of the world. And John the Beloved said, Behold what manner of love. John could not explain it. So John invites his audience to take a look for yourself. That you 
might behold the Lamb of God. Wash it us white as snow. Invite you to stand, beloved friends. Stand with me tonight as we go to tonight's closing exercises. Everybody is standing. Look at the sacrifice. And he is our surety. A surety is a person who knows everything about you. Who knows everything about two parties. He came as a man. He understands your temptation. He understands your weakness. He was afflicted as you are afflicted. In all your troubles, he has experienced your troubles. But tonight, my beloved friends, God has made a way that you also can be at peace with your maker. Tonight, I just want to make an appeal to somebody here tonight who have not yet settled it with God. Somebody's coming. Somebody's coming. Somebody's coming. Somebody else need to come tonight. Come, beloved. Come. We're having a big, big baptism here on Sabbath. And the Bible says, He that believeth and is baptized shall be safe. Come, beloved. Praise God. They are coming. Where are all secretaries? They are coming. Somebody here tonight need to know Jesus. Somebody here tonight, if you have not known Jesus, now is the acceptable time. You're coming here saying that you're standing on the promises of Jesus. That when you come to him, he will no wise cast you out. Now is your moment. Do you hear the Savior's voice? There might be somebody here tonight want to rededicate your life to Jesus. Now is your moment as well. Jesus, bid you come. Come, beloved. Come. Come as you are. Come and meet at the altar the man Jesus. Come. Come, beloved. Don't be afraid. Now is your time. Come, pastor. Now is your time. Come, beloved. Jesus bid you come. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. We certainly want to thank the Lord. We certainly want to thank the Lord for these two precious souls that has decided to go all the way with Jesus. Beloved friends, we remember Brother Simon, Sister Louis, Brother Simon, the dad used to be in our class. Very wonderful person. He went by the home today and reminded him that I used to eat Papa off of a special tree up there. So I'm coming to eat Papa again <laughs> in Jesus' name. His mom is such a sweet lady. Such a sweet lady. We love them. And Jesus loved them too. Is there any soul who have wandered far away from Jesus? But today, you just want to be included in this prayer as the pastor comes to pray for us. You have that privilege now. Come, Jean. Come. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come, friends. Bring your grandchildren too. Hallelujah. Bring your grandchildren. Come. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. God kiss. God kiss, beloved. Coming now to thee. Wash me, cleanse me. Everybody singing, everybody singing. That flows. That flows from Calvary. We'll sing one last stanza, one last stanza. We sing it over. Everybody singing. Is Jesus called me on to perfect faith and love, to perfect hope and peace and trust for earth and heaven above. Listen to the words of the chorus. I, I am coming, Lord. Coming, Lord. 
coming, Lord, to thee. Coming now to thee. Wash, Wash me, me cleanse, cleanse me in the blood, in the blood that flows from Calvary. That flows from Calvary. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed, and our hearts are lifted heavenwards. Our Father and our God, we are so thankful tonight that again you have made your word clear to us that death is not the end, that you have something greater. You're more powerful than death, and so you have something greater in store for us. And that's why we are accepting you afresh. We're committing to you afresh tonight. We're so thankful for those who have come forward. I ask their God that you will seal their decisions with you so that they would be saved, so that they would experience the blessings of eternal life, so that when you come again, they too will be in that number when the saints go marching in. This is our desire tonight, dear God. And so we pray for each and every one who have decided for you. I pray, dear God, that you'll forgive them that you would cleanse them. You would help them to recognize that no weapons formed against them shall prosper. You would help them to recognize that though the enemy may bring discouragement, you will come to them as a mighty rushing wind and give them hope beyond measure. So bless them, O oh God, tonight. Save them in your eternal kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Let the church say, Amen. Let the words of my mouth, everybody, and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen and amen. Romans 6.23 For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life to Jesus Christ, our Lord. As we depart, let us keep this thought in mind. Death is not the end. Jesus wants to give us a special gift, which is the gift of life. God wants to save us from our sins, and he wants to take us to heaven to live with him, but we have to make that very special effort to do away with sin. Let us keep this message in our hearts as we go. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the king.